Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Sosa and I talk about a bunch of engineering stuff on this channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about mistakes that new software engineers make in the field. And I'm just gonna give some advice for software engineers who are kind of just starting out or are early in their career, whatever it may be. Maybe you're a new grad, maybe you just graduated from college and are looking to start your first engineering job. I have some tips for you and some advice for you as you begin this journey into engineering. So let's jump into it. So I've been a full-time software engineer for almost two and a half years now. I graduated from my undergrad program back in 2018 and I went through a lot of obstacles and roadblocks and made a lot of mistakes as a new engineer. And I kind of just want to talk to you guys about what those mistakes were, how I learned from them, how I move forward. So I have three big mistakes that I made early on in my career. And sorry about my cats. I got two kittens and they are probably probably going to be in this video a lot. Here's the first mistake that I made was not taking enough notes. So if you're sometimes unorganized like I can be, getting organized and taking notes can be really hard. In the very beginning of my engineering career, I used to just sit in meetings and think that I could just absorb everything that everyone was telling me or what was going on in the meetings without having to take down notes. Or if I did take down notes, it would be just a job of a detail of something or high level thoughts that I had instead of very detailed you know notes that I could look back on and that ended up being a problem when I wasn't taking notes because if I were to run into a similar issue that I had a couple months ago so let's say I found a bug in some code and I had no idea how to approach it so I went to somebody and they kind of talked to me about how to work through it and this is something they've seen before so this is how to do it x y and z at the time I wouldn't take notes on what X, Y, and Z was. I would just go do it and then be like, okay, well I fixed it, now I can move on. And then a couple months later, if I were to run into that same bug again, it would be embarrassing to go to that same person and be like, hey, so I ran into this thing again. I didn't take notes down the first time when you told me about it. Do you mind going through it again? And obviously my team is and was very open to answering questions as I had them. But as an engineer, you have to be able to take initiative and and like be able to not only figure out how to solve problems, but to be able to solve problems in an efficient way. And notes and taking detailed notes helps you be efficient. So instead of going back to that same person over and over and over again and asking them how to do this one particular thing, if you take notes on it the first time, you won't have to go back and ask them again. And it'll help you move quickly and get past the problem faster. So that's what I figured out earlier on is taking very detailed notes. And it's not even just taking notes on problems that I'm solving, but also taking notes in a meeting. If I'm having a one-on-one -on -one with my manager and she's laying out different tasks that she expects me to complete and wants me to talk to certain individuals about a problem, I'm taking detailed notes of our one-on-one -on -one so that I can have that on record and be able to go back and say, okay, what did she want me to do again? Oh, she wanted me to do X, Y, and Z. I use something called Microsoft OneNote and that's where I take all of my notes. I section it by projects, by meetings by this thing called a brag sheet which I think I'll talk about a little bit later but I have different sections for everything that I work on and take notes on every single thing that I touch so then if I need to be able to reference those notes later on I can be able to easily do that or if somebody needs some help and I'm like oh wait I actually ran into this problem a little bit ago let me go check my notes and then I can send them the notes that I took so these notes can really end up being a wealth of information for you I also on my team we also do these things called stack status updates and so we kind of talk about what we've been working on throughout the week and we do that every Thursday we'll just write in a wiki page what we worked on that week and so every day I take like 10 to 15 minutes out of my day to write down my status for that day and what I worked on for that day because if you wait until like the end of the week you're not going to remember what you did and so I kind of jot down every day at the end of the day what I worked on who I worked on it with and I have that in like a little folder within OneNote that has like statuses. So status for Monday was X, Y, and Z, and I worked on this and that with this. And so then on Thursday, I can come look at the statuses folder and look at all the notes that I took 
this past week and be able to, you know, write down a, a concise summary of what I've done. As I said earlier, they can be such a wealth of information. They can be a source for you to be able to solve problems that you've already encountered before. And when you're coming up on your performance reviews with your managers and your team, you can be able to look back at your notes and figure out all the things that you've done for that year and be able to jot down. And that's the brag sheet that I was talking about earlier is like you can make a whole brag sheet folder or file or whatever and kind of just take notes on all the bigger things that you've been able to accomplish throughout the weeks or months that you've been on that team and kind of just be able to have a log of all the awesome work that you've done so that when performance reviews come around when promotions come around you be you can be able to have something concrete to show your manager and say hey this is all the work that I've done this is all the improvements that I've made I think I deserve x y and z or whatever it may be but taking notes is so vital you should practice doing it earlier on because it'll only help you out and not taking notes at all is just not a great way to progress as an engineer and I know that sometimes we don't want to you know document things or whatever and writing can be kind of annoying but it's so necessary it's such a necessary skill so get on your note-taking game it's important <laughs> okay my next tip and next mistake that I made and a lot of newer engineers make is not taking the time to understand a system before you start implementing a new feature. When you're taking on a new project or a new feature, it's very easy to just jump in and start trying to implement things and trying to code and figuring out what will work and what won't work. For example, I was recently tasked with adding a new feature to our infrastructure product. And if you don't know what I do, you can check that out in a, another video that I made earlier about what kind of work that I do. But anyway, with this new feature, I thought I could just jump right in and start coding and that it would be an easy easy ad, but I realized that it wasn't and I ended up wasting a lot of time. I had to start completely from scratch and figuring out exactly what the code does. I had to write out print statements, write out other debugging statements to figure out what each function and what each method did and how each function and method interacted with each other. I ran a lot of tests and I broke a lot of stuff, obviously in my own environment. That way I could like really figure out how all the pieces fit together. This gives you a much clearer clearer picture of the full system that you're trying to design or implement a new feature for. So before you jump in and start coding, once you get that you know new feature request, it's really important that you take the time to understand the system itself and figure out how things work and how things interact with each other. And it'll help you waste a lot less time once you know how all of the little pieces of the puzzle work, right? And you can be able to ask more questions about why, you know, why does this work in this way and what does this actually do and what will my feature do once it's implemented and how will it fit into all of these pieces that we already have right now like it's important to ask those questions and you can only ask those questions or come up with those questions when you do your own research and when you do your own digging don't do what I did and try jumping into a problem without understanding the context make sure that you understand the system that you're building or implementing features for because it will take you a long way and the third and final mistake that I made earlier earlier on is not asking for help. This is like a recurring theme for me, not asking for help. Um, it's, it's a problem that I had when I was an undergrad in computer science and it's a problem that apparently I still deal with today is I can sometimes think that I got it and that, you know, I figured things out when I really haven't. And I've just been struggling with the problem for a while. And I get, sometimes I get too ashamed to ask for help. And I sometimes feel like it's too late to ask. And that really hurt me in my early engineering career. And for me, it can be really scary to face something that I've never seen before. And a lot of the times I want, as a junior engineer, I want to be able to prove that I can solve something that might be a little bit more complex. And this isn't inherently a bad thing to want to like take the time for yourself to figure something out but it becomes an issue when it's taking you longer than maybe a couple hours to to get past the initial stage or maybe if it's not an initial stage to get past any roadblock that you're feeling because after a certain amount of time or I know for me if I get blocked for longer than I don't know maybe like an hour or two I start to really become demotivated so I learned early on that if you do start to struggle for longer than a couple hours then it's time to ask for help. Ask someone on your team and make sure 
you take note of the solution that they give you or any advice that they give you. So in case you run into the same problem as we were talking about before, you'll have these notes down so that you won't have to go back and ask them again. And you just don't wanna get stuck for longer than necessary. You know, you wanna take that time, yes, to like sit down and figure out and see if you can figure out a problem on your own. But if it's taking way longer than you expected, then there's no shame in asking someone else on your team for help and for guidance and for advice. You wanna make sure that as an engineer, you're not only figuring out and learning things on your own, but that you're also able to use the resources that are right in front of you, which include your teammates. So yeah, that is the advice that I have for, for engineers early on in their career. I hope it's helpful. Please leave me any comments or questions or concerns that you have down in the comments below. Like this video if you like it, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.